Welcome to this video. Now in this video we will see how we can send a signal from S7-1200 PLC to the safety controller as a virtual non-safety input. In the last video we have seen how we can read the status of the sensor in the PLC. Now we can send a signal from PLC to SC controller. So it's kind of both way communication. So this is going to be interesting because we are going to use factory IO as an example. So I want to include this e-stop which you see here this e-stop in my safety circuit. So I want this circuit to be triggered with the e-stop when I press this here. How this is possible? So let's consider a situation when your PLC controller has an application. with some e-stop buttons and this is a different circuit compared to your circuitry of SE10 controller. So let's imagine you cannot, you cannot connect e-stop directly to SE10 controller but you have to send via Profinet. Could be any situation, could be any other gate switch, not, not only e-stop but in this example we consider e-stop as a signal going via Profinet to SE10 controller. So we have to configure the program inside this controller and write a small algorithm in the PLC and connect it all together. So let's do step by step. So in PLC, I'm connecting this PLC to the factory IO just for the demonstration. Maybe you have a real-time application. So let's imagine your PLC input is connected to e-stop button. So in our case, if I show you my tags, my e-stop button is connected to the input i200.1 okay at the moment you can see it's true because e-stop is always nc so if i go play and if i show you by pressing it i pressed and now it's false so by default it's nc so we have seen the status that my e-stop is connected to one of my input i200.0 now I want to send the signal to the safety controller, this true and false signal, simple as that. And this I have configured in a way that I, if I show you my banner tag, go online. And here, if you notice, I have took a tag EM stop status, which is, this is banner status, not this one. This one, PLC virtual non-safety output, Q64.0. How do I get that? Let me show you the program. I have a small function, very simple PLC program. And let's have a look. And in this program it says, just when the factory IO EM stop is true, another output is true. And this output I took in the main program. Let's have a look. So if I go online, so if EM stop is true, your virtual output is also true. So this is just following this output. So again, if I just go to play and press this one, you can see this is false. So this is the main output. And here I took the address Q64.0. I want to show you why. If you go back to your networks from the last video, let me just stop this. Here we can also take an output. So I took the first output, which shows here virtual on off, virtual on off status. So I took the first output Q64.0 in my PLC program. Okay, Q64.0, you have to remember that. So this I took in my PLC tags. If I show you here, Q64.0, this is my output of my PLC. And this is going to safety controller. So we have to use this information in my program to trigger this circuit with the e-stop of my virtual environment. Let's see how we can do that. Very easy. So at the moment we know we have an output Q64.0. Let's see how we can use that in the safety controller. So I go to my controller and I will add a virtual input now. So here it's virtual non-safety input. I go to virtual on off and let's name it as V on one, that's okay. I can put EM stop or EMS because I can't write all of them. 
EMS is fine. Virtual bit index zero, that's okay. Click okay. So now you can see that this input is here. All I have to do is I have to connect this input in the series of these two LR blocks. So here, for example, I have magnetic switch, door switch. I can connect e-stop as well, or I can also connect e-stop to the output. So it depends on what, how I want to disassociate my outputs. Let's say I want to connect this in both of the circuits of the upper R01 and R02 as well. In this case, I will open this block. I will make three inputs and click OK. Now I have an extra input. I can connect this here. So now this is a series block with magnetic switch, door switch and EM stop coming from my factory I/O environment. And then this I can also connect here, but in this case I need an AND block. So I will go here, take an AND block of two inputs, click OK. Now this EM stop which was coming from my safety kit, this will go as my input here. And this I can also take here. And the output of AND block will go to my LR block. Now this input is associated with both of the AND blocks. This is the task. That's it. Now we have to download, write it, save. And I will save it as project maybe one. It's already saved. Maybe make it as two. Click save. Put my safety password. OK, continue. And you know this process from the last videos. Confirm. And I have to restart my controller. So very quickly, I will do that. Controller is restarted. And now let's have a look. I go to live mode. And now you can see that this is not true. So let's, OK, one more thing. I forgot to mention that. We took the input here. We also have to take this, take this tag in the Ethernet configuration. So I have to go offline. Okay. So now go to industrial Ethernet and go to virtual non-safety input. Here we define where we're going to read it. So here you can see that it's automatically connected to my first output. So V on V on one EMS. This is my this is my input of SC10 controller, but the output of PLC. So this is automatically coming here. If it's not here, you have to check where to place it. Okay. Now we can go back to functional view, go to live view. And now we can see that this is already true. So let's see the status. We can go to play. And now this e-stop is not pressed. Operation is going on and a reset is required. So let me reset it. Now it's reset. You can see that my relays are true. And here you can also see e-stop is not pressed. So you can forget the application on the back. This is just for information. So now you can see if I press my e-stop, let me just small the window. So when I press this e-stop, here it's better. You can see that the circuit is triggered because this is false. And my relays are off in SC10 controller. You can see this relay is also off. And if I release it now, now it will ask, reset is required. You can see in the controller, same as before. So I reset it and now application is working. Interesting thing is you can also see my other safety inputs are working along with my e-stop. So we have added an extra input in our safety circuit via Profinet. This was the task of this video. And you can also see I have just for explanation integrated this mechanism with my safety inputs. So if I press e-stop here, this will stop my robot, stop the whole process. And if I release it and make a manual reset, I start the process. So this has been integrated in my PLC process. This is very simple because I'm using factory IO. I'm just reading the Profinet inputs of these status and triggering the machine output. So this machine start stop is being triggered by my safety circuit because I'm reading this values via Profinet here. So if you want to see the logic, if I go inside, you can see my R01 and R02 status. So if my relay status are true, then my machine start is true and false, machine stop is false. Otherwise, 
my machine start is false and machine stop is true. So I'm just using an AND gate, very simple. So this was the objective, how to integrate virtual non-safety input from my factory environment to my safety kit and taking the signal from safety kit to control PLC, PLC application. All right, if you have any doubt, you can post me a comment. And if you are doing the same, if you have any problems, maybe I can help you, just let me know. So this was the objective. This is the solution. You can have a copy of this presentation if you like.